Okay, so this has been a project I've been wanting to do for <laughs> probably a couple of years, just for some reason never did. So anyway, I'm gonna get to it. I got one of these old Cobra pistol crossbows. This is an older version, because now there's like the R9 one, which is like a full-size pump action crossbow. I'm getting one, or I'm getting the cold steel variant of it, because it's like $100 cheaper for the same thing with a different paint job. But that's not important. Anyway, I've had this one for a couple of years now. It's They're fun to play around with, but like I said, it's, I got it to actually put a you know giant magazine on top of it and all that. Or probably not a giant magazine, but one that I can hold more than one shot in. So what I did, for starters, I haven't made the magazine or anything, or even templates for it yet, is I made templates for a stock and kind of a front part here, so that way it's not a pistol. Uh, this, I basically made this, I modeled it off of a lot of the uh, the bracers for like AR-15s that you can put on the front. They're not count as front grip, so you can also put on the pistol variant without getting into legal trouble in America. I don't know if that's what they're designed for, but that's what a lot of people seem to use them for. And for the stock, I made this ugly thing. It's probably look better once it's actually cut out of plywood and not cardboard, but I want a template so I can fit it on first. I actually designed that one off of the AK-47. That's a Wasser 1063, if anyone's wondering. But I had to make a few modifications to it so that way it can fit on there and actually still function because uh, that is a lot bigger than that, as you can tell. Anyway, so what I'm gonna start with is go out to my shop where I have a, uh, well, it's plywood, but it's like a, or it's not plywood, da da da. It's a took, uh, th yeah, can't speak. What I'm gonna use for these pieces and probably a lot of my other pieces is part of a pallet that my anvil came on because it's that really, uh, it's a probably about an inch thick plywood, but it has the really thin layers so that was a lot more of them, and it's stronger. And I have it, so I don't have to get new stuff. Okay, so, oh man, the, my desk is a mess. I have the stock on. I don't know if I mentioned, but I just have these metal strips uh, just cut out and then bolted on. I was originally gonna have like some wood laminated and then glued on, but after making this, I actually kind of liked it without it more. But for the video, I wanted to make the stock, so I have it on to where, for where, when I'm, yeah, to where if I want to, I can just remove it. But this front grip here, I actually just took a bunch of uh, JB Weld, so it is actually firmly attached. 
And it's actually really comfortable to use, especially without the stock and even with the stock. Uh, I'm gonna, of course, paint all of these black so it matches the rest of the crossbow. Uh, I'll do that, of course, once I have the whole thing completed. But what I'm gonna do now is make the probably more important part, and hopefully I'll make it a little more detailed or at least explain what I'm doing, is the magazine on top. If my measurements are correct, it should hold about six to seven-ish shots. So, you know, your revolver type. I'm gonna build the size just out of a two inch aluminum. And of course the same plywood as before and some other varying pieces. I've looked at some other ones of these that are actually manufactured and sold for actually some pretty high prices. So hopefully I can do it and my basic plan is I'll take the sights off here and here, and that'll be where it'll be mounted on. I'll have, of course, a screw there with kind of a bracket that'll have a latch on it to help hold the top door. It'll make sense when they show it. But basically, it'll have the two aluminum sights here with a hollowed out thing, and the top will have a lid that comes down with a kind of a leaf spring that just pushes down on them. I've seen, I was gonna make like a lever system, but that seemed like it's gonna be really complicated and take up a ton of room. And I was looking at them, they just have like a little just metal tab essentially that pushes it down. And I'm gonna cut that from probably a, just some old saw blades I had lying around, like the big hand saw blades, because they're really thin, but they're really flexible. And I think if I take those, take a torch, shape it, and hopefully it'll remain springy. If not, I'll just heat treat and temper it. And again, I'll attempt to do that with a torch so that way I can actually show everyone here how that's done instead of having to use my forge. But like I said, I'll, I'll show it as I go and I'll probably chop down a lot of it so I can make this a video that's actually not an hour long. Okay, so for the magazine, I got these two pieces of two inch by one eighth aluminum. I cut them to about a foot long. I didn't measure it until I, well, probably about 30 seconds ago to know they're actually foot long. But what I did is I took my crossbow and basically just made to where the aluminum went from the front to the back just before the locking mechanism. Uh, I'm gonna see, I sketched out using a paint marker because my Sharpie was ruined from sitting in my shop for a long time. And the basic design is I actually more or less designed it off of, again, other ones of these that are made and uh, this part here is what's gonna be the uh, main part and all these edges will be cut off. This part, let's see, will fit on, okay, about there. So this part here will be attached to like a wooden piece made of plywood, similar to what I use for the rest of it. That'll hold it on where the sight sits and I'll have to make a bracket to where it fits onto the front where the front sight sits as well. And uh, so this space is gonna be cut out to fit over the crossbow, or the back of it anyway. This will be cut out for the string, and of course make sure that's filed down and smooth so you don't tear up your string. This will just be cut off and removed. This space will be uh, cut out so that way my uh, top door will just be made. I don't remember the exact size. I think it's like one inch by 3 16 steel. That'll be my top lid and my spring will be mounted onto that. This is gonna be cut down and the ones I've seen, this wasn't didn't look cut down but it had a railing system there, which I wanna add so I can put sights on it. I will probably also bolt some onto the sides here since there'll be a wooden block here to help hold that together with space so that way the bolt can fly underneath it. I'll show that as I have everything assembled. But I'm gonna go out to my shop and uh, I'll probably just use a jigsaw to cut it out because that's about the easiest way to cut this unless you want to do it with a hacksaw and I'm not a masochist. Okay, so I have those cut out. I also cut out a couple pieces of uh, plywood, same as the stuff used previously. 
I cut them to where they'll match the inside of here. This side, of course, is a little shorter, so that way the bolts can actually slide underneath it when fired. That would be a disaster if they weren't. I also cut out these. I can't remember the thickness of these. I think it measures to like just under a quarter inch. And they'll be glued inside here on either side, so that way the bolts can't move from side to side. I'm gonna have them back far enough to where they basically rest on the front of the fletchings. Uh, on this piece, I cut a groove in, so the bolts sit in there, also to help them from moving. Now, all I have left to do before I actually assemble this, and I'm gonna use JB Weld for all of that. I've had a lot of, a lot of good luck with that recently, so I'm gonna continue using it. But I'm gonna make the uh, lid, I guess, out of just a piece of steel. This is, I wanna say 3 16 by one inch, but I might be wrong. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut in on the sides here to where I can slide in between these two pieces, but I'll leave a little tab on the sides here so that way I can drill a hole through here and that acts as uh, an ax axle or catch. I don't know what you wanna call that. But so that way it can close, and then I'll probably have a little tab on the side that I'll cut a slot in here, and then just have like a hook or something on this. And then the spring, I'm just gonna take a hand saw blade that I have lying around, and then cut it into just the thin strip to where I can slide in the middle here, and have it to where it's pushing down. And I'll probably just use popper if it's to put it in place, because that'll be about the easiest. Catch all that. Now all I need is the spring. Okay, so I have this ribbed it on. Uh, yeah, it's a rivet. I also went ahead, I drilled a hole here. It's just some thin pieces of aluminum. I screwed it in using the screw that was already there. I also drilled a hole in the back to use the screw. Again, I wanted to use as many of the original parts as well as be able to just take this stuff off and put on the old. Uh, I had to do a lot of fine tuning and I still have a little bit left to do. Mostly just trying to get everything to work because uh, if you have access to like mills or a 3D printer, especially 3D printer, I'd recommend using that and making something a lot more precise than just cutting and grinding this to shape. It's a lot more work. And other than that, it's pretty much done and I probably won't film any more until the test. All I really have left to do is, and one of the tests I had an issue with the last bolt jamming, and this I didn't reheat treat because it's still springy, but not as much as I think it should be. I think this bend kind of drifts a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just probably heat treat that little bit and then temper it. I mean, if I just weren't loading it up as much, it probably wouldn't be an issue, but I wanna hold all six rounds, which it does hold, it holds six. And then I'll also just have like probably a little tab on the end here that holds this in place because uh, if you have it in, it just kind of sits like this. And of course I need to get railing to put on here and on there. I don't have that, so even in the tests, which I haven't filmed yet, you probably won't see any railing just because I won't really be anywhere to get any for probably a few weeks. You might even actually see this before I get around to getting railing for it, but honestly, it looks really cool my opinion, and it functions, so that's cool. Again, I'll probably take this off because I don't like it, but still, it makes it a, makes it actually a pretty pretty, uh, pretty good weapon, and you know, you get six shots instead of one. Oh, I'll probably also drill a hole in the side here and then put like a little carrying thing on it, so I just put a sling, like just a single point. So, yeah, I, I might stop in and just Say after I've put the tabs on or... No, I should probably won't do that. Nothing about... It. But I'll probably, you know, do a quick test here at the end too. Just, you know, why not? You know. Okay, so this is the 
mostly finished product. All that's left is just a bit of paint to make everything look, you know, a little more uniform. I added a small latch to the end here, made the same as the spring, which I adjusted to where hopefully it doesn't jam anymore. I probably won't add it, but I did a quick test and it fired five out of the six shots just fine. And the last one, it skipped, I think, and didn't work. But it just sticks into a little groove. I cut them back there and it opens up.